On this episode of the Cover 4 Podcast, the time is finally here. The 2023 NFL Draft is just ahead of us, so we are going to give you our mock draft. We'll alternate pick by pick, and we'll see what we come up with. Stick around for more. Welcome to the Cover 4 Podcast. I'm Nolan, that's Bradshaw, that's Jeff, that is Luca. Guys, this is usually one of our favorite episodes to do, the mock draft. We're going to do one round. And we're going to alternate pick by pick. Now, this is sort of a mix. Over the past couple of years when we've done it, it's sort of a mix of what we think could happen and what we'd also do. Usually nothing really crazy. It's not like we like somebody who we know is going to be a mid-round pick and we're throwing them in the top 10. Not going to be the case. Most of these players are going to be first-rounders or you know, kind of fringe first-round players. Regardless, let's get right in. Jeff. You have the number one overall pick. So, Carolina on the clock. I don't think they're going to be on the clock for long. Jeff, who are the Panthers taking at number one? No, in fact, uh, we got somebody racing up to uh, Roger Goodell, handing him the pick right now. Obviously, a lot of discussion. We know that they're taking a quarterback. Which one will they take? Ultimately, you got Bryce Young, a guy who has some size concerns, but he's probably the best quarterback prospect right now, ready to start today. At least that's what people might think. Some people might think it's C.J. Stroud, and also he has probably the size that you want in a quarterback to, you know, sustain in the NFL. And a lot of people have seemed to think for a long time that he was going to be the guy. But since somebody in this chat here uh, might have money on the line, we're going to manifest it, and we're going to take Anthony Richardson. Wow. We're going to take the upside because why not? Because why not take the guy with the upset? Now, Bradshaw has made the case that he's definitely not ready to start. But Frank Reich, Frank Reich might think that he's a QB whisperer. And now is the time to prove us and everybody else that's been saying that right. Because this is it. You got no more shots after this. No matter who you take, they better show something in these next at least two years. Because otherwise, Frank, I mean, I, I don't know what we're doing. I think we're giving all the credit to Doug Peterson for that Super Bowl run. Anthony Richardson has been taken. We got a couple more QBs left on the clock, though, for the rest of the QB needy teams. Holy moly. So we get off to a wild start right away. Um, I'm drafting for Houston, and in my needs, I have, you know, quarterback, receiver, edge, any position of value that, you know, they're not a really talented team, but they do have some young guys coming up. I had Stroud and Levis there because I figured Bryce Young would be gone. Now that Bryce Young is available, I'm sp- this one I'm sprinting the card up to Roger Goodell. So Bryce Young, who everyone thinks is going one, goes to two in the Houston Texans. Um, so wow, how about that? And uh, no one really would have thought that, but I will definitely select him right away. The noise was that Will Levis was rising up to two, so I, I was getting ready to make that decision, but I guess I'm not going to have to. So I'm sure a lot of people are going to be sprinting to Arizona. And trying to figure out, you know, how to make a trade with them. But Bradshaw, for this case scenario, who do you think Arizona goes with at three? If I was the Cardinals, I would probably trade down. Uh, I would probably take one of those offers. But since we're not doing trades, we're not doing that. Um, I'm going to take who I believe is the best player available in the entire draft. And that is Will Anderson. I think the Cardinals are in a position where they just need to take anybody. that uh, take the best player available. And they get the best player in the draft, in my opinion, uh, Will Anderson, he would help literally any team right now. I don't care how many edge rushers you have. He would help literally any team right away. He is uh, incredible, and he's going to be a starter from day one for the Cardinals and an impact player for the Cardinals from day one. So our first non-quarterback selected, and this has been the case of Anderson for pretty much years, uh, that everyone kind of knew he'd be you know, arguably the number one pick or just a top pick at that when he was even a freshman at Alabama. So that leaves us with two quarterbacks on the board for Indy, who's a quarterback needy team. Luca, do they go the direction of CJ Stroud or do they go the direction of Will Levis? Yeah, I think I think they run this one up as well. CJ Stroud is still there. They'll go with CJ Stroud. I think it's a pretty easy pick. Um Jeff always seems to shock us at the top of the draft. <laughs> so uh, but you never know on draft day, right? So um I, I think if you're the Colts and, and this is a possibility, you're definitely happy with the selection. So they'll select CJ Stroud. Wow, already. What a top four already. Three quarterbacks going. Still, we mentioned Levis is still available. So, Jeff, now you have the fifth pick here with Seattle. And Seattle could go quarterback. 
but you know they just gave an extra contract to Geno Smith. So do they go best player available here and take a, a defensive player or maybe add another weapon? What do you have the Seahawks doing at five? Yeah, I think the most I think the most likely thing is, and I'm really just basing this off of past draft strategies uh, from the the Seahawks. Realistically, is that they're they're going to want uh, more defensive guys. They're going to want to build this roster, and it's always been like a prove it type of uh, prove it type of team. I think one thing that might Seattle is a weird drafting team. I don't think I'm going to go weird here. I'm going to go best player on the board. We'll take Jalen Carter right away. Um, and I think you just improve that defense so dramatically. And that's already a pretty, I think, pretty good defense that's coming up. I, I think it's really simple. Um, but Seattle may shock you. You never know. They, they, they've done some wild things in the past. I, I, part of me thinks they won't keep it so simple uh, come draft night. Interesting. And I think that's something Seattle needs. Obviously, their run defense was horrible and has been for a few years. So they get somebody like Jalen Carter who's going to be, you know, the piece to build around on defense. Pretty fantastic for them. Also, just we wanted to mention uh, that fifth pick. So that was Denver's pick that, you know, happened in – or not De- – uh, yeah, Denver's pick that happened in the Russell Wilson trade, and that's what or the Seahawks ended up drafting in the top five. This pick here for Detroit was the Rams trade in the Matt Stafford deal, and that's where I'm selecting here at six. So my player I had top highlighted was Carter – now that he's unavailable, I think the Lions take the top corner off the board. So it's whether you like Christian Gonzalez or Devin Witherspoon. I think Devin Witherspoon fits a little bit more uh, just there in Detroit and kind of what, what they're going for. And I, I like him as a corner. You know, he you know comes down the field hard and uh, hits receivers uh, right at the point of contact. So uh, I'm going to take him, and I think he's rising up board. So Witherspoon, the top corner selected uh, here in our draft at six for the Lions. And then that brings us to the Raiders, who they could use a quarterback, I guess, but they did just give uh, Jimmy G that contract. So, Bradshaw, what do you have the Raiders at seven doing? I would have probably gone Richardson if he was on the board, but Jeff, with no logic at all, took him at one. So, I'll, 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 we'll have to settle for that. Um, Boy, oh boy, there's a lot there. They, I mean, the Raiders have a lot of things they could do here. Um, Good lord. What a team. What a team with a lot of interesting needs. Uh, you know what? I don't think God, they're yeah, their cornerback room is a mess. It'd be weird to go uh, it'd be weird to go two corner it'd be weird to see two corners going in the top seven picks, but their cornerback room is an absolute joke. So I'm gonna go with Christian Gonzalez. I think he's the top corner on the board. Um mm. yeah, like right now they're starting Nate Hobbs and Duke Shelley. Good lord, Las Vegas. Figure out your team. Uh, Christian Gonzalez to the Raiders. Uh, I think I think this would be a prime spot for Richardson. I think this would be a prime spot for even Will Levis, even. But uh, their cornerback room is a joke. So, yeah, let's go with Christian Gonzalez here. Christian Gonzalez. So two corners go back to back. And uh, Luca, you get the honor here of selecting oh, yeah. the Atlanta Falcons. And what, and what an honor it is. Yeah, Surely you will, you will not make a smarter pick than the Falcons. Let's no. see. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, well he i he won't <laughs> um oh, sorry i can't give you richardson um Thank i think God. yeah um listen i i think last year when they took drake london as the first receiver a lot of us were like okay like not bad and, and i think something not similar where it's a bit of a reach but i think they're going to go for some upside here and keep him close to where he played college i'm actually going to go nolan smith here um mm-hmm. i i think he's an you know Athletic freak. I know Jeff really likes him. Uh, and I think, you know, under Calais Campbell, he can teach him some things. So I think this is an upside pick for the Falcons. And if he pans out, guys, it could be a huge ad for them on the D-line. I like that pick. You know, it's a, one I didn't expect, but, you know, like, cause it's a weird – he's a weird player to fit where mm-hmm. you think he can go because you could see him going in the 20s. You could see him going in the 10s where we have him. Uh, I like that one, Luca. Um, so you got the pick for Bradshaw's team. Jeff gets the pick for his own team. So Jeff, your Chicago Bears, lots of holes on this roster. Of course, they had the number one pick and then did the trade back uh, with Carolina. They collected you know some extra picks and DJ Moore and all that jazz. But who did they select here at nine? Well, you could pretty much go anywhere, like you said, Nolan. Um, unfortunately, I think there's really only a couple top tier prospects in this draft. And I have been having a tough time really figure out who is the tackle, honestly, who is the best. I'm not sure exactly how you guys feel about that. 
But uh, I I might shock people here. I really like Darnell Wright from Tennessee because, mm. listen, I honestly don't think there is a big difference whether you put a guy on the right or the left. And he's just a monster if you've seen him play. Like, this guy will just destroy blockers. He's a great right tackle. Like, if that is the knock on him, to me, he's the best tackle available. I wasn't, like, super, if I'm honest, I wasn't, like, super impressed with Paris Johnson from Ohio State. And then when it comes to a guy like Peter Skronsky, who is, like, considered the top tackle, there's so many concerns about him potentially moving to guard. I'd, like... At that point, I'd rather just take the tackle. So, so give me, give me the best one. Give me the most physical guy. Give me Darnell Wright. Wow, Darnell Wright, a little bit of a shocker, but you know, you, you never really know if these tackles, right? It, it feels like there was a few years where you know someone would have this guy at number one the whole entire time, and then they fall a little bit. Um, but the Bears, yeah, they definitely need a tackle. Smart move there. So that leaves me. Uh, Eagles with the 10th pick. Again, this is a loaded roster. They can go any which way they want. I think it's too early to go safety. Um, but I, I think they'll just make you know the rich richer, and they, I think they're going to capitalize on that O-line. Uh, I think that the left tackle position is wide open. Lane Johnson, we don't know how much longer he's going to be there. Now with both guys available, Skaronsky and Paris Johnson Jr., I think they go with versatility and go Skaronsky. A little bit smaller, can play inside or outside. So I think Skaronsky is uh, arguably the top tackle or offensive lineman for that fact. He'll go 10 uh, to the Eagles, which of course was the Saints pick from that wild trade a few years ago. Um, so Peter Skaronsky goes 10 to the Eagles. Now Bradshaw, Titans here at 11. This roster is really, really weird. And a lot of people have been mocking you know, them taking a quarterback who kind of has similar traits to Ryan Tannehill. Do they go that direction or do they go best receiver available, seeing as how they don't really have many receivers? Nope. They have the worst O-line in football and they're taking Paris Johnson here because the Titans need to run the ball. And if they are determined to win, uh, they need offensive linemen and just take Paris Johnson because your entire O-line is a joke, like the entire thing. Uh, so, yeah, Paris Johnson, pretty easy. I was yeah. I honestly considered taking Bijan just for fun and then trading Derrick Henry, but... We won't do that to the we won't do that to the Titans, uh, at least this time. Uh, but yeah, Paris Johnson. I like Paris Johnson quite a bit actually. So yeah, this this works. Yeah, no, I I think that's a solid pick there as well. And uh, and I guess you know what you're right because Taylor lewan has gone right. I think they yeah. they figured that as well. So they need a new tackle. That team is not going to be good next year. No, uh, <laughs> no, they are not. Okay, so uh, three tackles was that three in a row? I think we went three yeah, tackles, three tackles in a yeah. row. Um, so no tackles, unless you go for a reach here, uh, Luca. But the Texans, lots of holes on this roster, but they need weapons. They they could go best weapon available, or do they try and bolster that uh, DB room or uh, defensive line? Yeah, I just think when you have a new quarterback like they got at number two, Bryce Young, you just give him an immediate, immediate weapon. And, God, I really hope this doesn't happen because I would love – for the Patriots to take him. I don't think he'll be there, though. So I'm going to go with JSN, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. I just think pairing him up with, with Bryce Young, both on rookie deals, and you let them go for the next four years and try to you know make some noise in that division. And, and I think you're going to make your young quarterback happy because even though he's a slot guy, we've said it in other podcasts, he can catch the ball, he's very smart, and he gets separation. So I think this is a good pick for the Houston Texans. Love that pick. Home run pick, I, I think – you know, them moving forward, that's a, like a fine offense. And, yeah. uh, you know, it's kind of weird to say, but what a turnaround for that organization. Um, that would be uh, pretty wild. Uh, so now, Jeff, we go over to what right now is the Jets pick. Could end up being the Packers pick, but still, let's draft it as like it's uh, New York is drafting there at 13. Yeah, and, you know, like we're pretty much all assuming that this Aaron Rodgers thing happens. In, for so many years, we've always talked about Aaron Rodgers potentially getting more weapons, and he did pretty well with Christian Watson, despite some really bad like starting to to start out. You know, there was some rough, rough. Hey, I there, there's there's also there is like still some holes on this Jets roster. I'm so tempted to take the best tight end available, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. We're going to take another tackle, solidify that offensive line because Aaron Rodgers cannot move. If you're the Jets, you know that and. Hey, listen, if for whatever reason this trade doesn't happen, you need to figure out that offensive line, you know, especially with Mekhi Becton and his injury issues. Let's take Broderick Jones out of Georgia. 
dealt with so many physical great players there in the SEC. So it seems like a pretty solid pick there at 13. I think solid's the way that pick goes. You don't think it's sexy at all, but it's kind of something you need to do, right? You mentioned Becton, and he can't stay on the field. He's a monster when he is, but um, why not get some more depth there on the offensive line and protect you know, Aaron Rodgers, who if he ends up being the quarterback there. Interesting. So the Jets do that move at 13, which leaves the Patriots a lot of different options they can go here. So i got to try and impress Luca here of what I do. Hmm. So, you got, feed, so what you so what you but if you want to make it realistic, you got to take, yeah just like, trade back. No, no, or you take a line, you take a linebacker from a D three school who can't yeah, move. Exactly, I, I I've seen it all, Nolan. Really, anything <laughs> you say here, it's just it's a mute face for me. Really, anything. Um, because they, they added Juju Smith Schuster, they added Mike Kosicki, so I don't unless if if Jackson Smith and Jigbo was available, I probably would have gone him. Uh, both the corners I would have liked are gone, but I still have in bold targets top corner. So I think I'm going to have to go with one of those guys. So, uh, and, and this has been mocked a thousand times. Luca mentioned in our last episode. I'll go Joey Porter Jr. here from Penn State. Boring, but uh, it's something that we kind of expect. Uh, and he had a great tape at Penn State. I, I think he's going to be a really solid player. So I'll, I'll do the uh, the safe pick here at 14 with the uh, Pats going with Joey Porter Jr. I know that doesn't really get you excited at all there, Luca, but <laughs> uh, well, it's okay. I, I, you know, I only look forward to it for three months for them to trade back anyway. So <laughs> I guess that's uh, part of the yeah, uh, I'm used to it. All righty. So that comes to the Packers here at 15, which could go really could go any which way here. Um, Jeff. So where, where do you have the uh, Packers doing? Bradshaw. 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 Whoopsie daisy. God. How dare you confuse me with Jeff. Would <laughs> never you can tell uh, how this like it, it should be an easy cycle of going yeah, I know. <laughs> it should be <laughs> once i'm trying to open all these tabs and like write down names and then i i get confused but my bad bradshaw so no, the pat- um jesus i i would have taken jsn same thing with like with the pats if he was on the board i would have taken him just he's the best receiver available he is the best weapon available the best offensive player well the best offensive player available is Bijan robinson but I don't think the, I think Packer fans would be a little just pissed off if they had three running backs that they had to choose from. Um, I could go Michael Mayer. Their safety room is also terrible. Their safety room is so bad. Like Darnell Savage isn't. He's more of a nickel now. Like he's not that good. He's, he's not. Sorry, not that good. He's not much of a safety anymore. Um, I'm gonna. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it kind of boring. Go with Michael Mayer. I think that's a that might be the most mocked pick. Uh, of any pick that I've seen, Michael Mayer to the Packers. He's a really, I mean, it is a, it is a perfect fit. They need a tight end. He's the best receiver available, wide receiver or tight end. Uh, so give me Michael Mayer. I think no matter if it's Jordan Love, Aaron Rodgers, I, I would doubt it's Aaron Rodgers. Jordan Love, Aaron Rodgers, if he happens to be there. They need weapons. Michael Mayer seems like a perfect choice, even though tight ends take a little bit longer to develop. But Michael Mayer will still be successful, successful enough in year one. I think. Those are three of the three of our last four picks have been the most mocked. Probably Jackson Smith and Jigba either going, you know, twelve or eleven yeah. um to Houston or um Tennessee, and then Joey Porter Jr. or Michael Mayer. But uh Washington and and uh, you know, another interesting one here, Luca. Um mm-hmm. where where do they go? Cause it seems like they're gonna roll Sam Howell as QB one, or maybe do they have Brissett too, right? So they could go mm-hmm. Brissett, but still that doesn't really seem solidified there at quarterback, but they're, they're yeah. really good in the wide receiver room. They could also have depth. What do you think they do? Yeah, this is a tough spot. I think if you're Washington, you're kind of annoyed of how the board has fallen so far. I mean, there is Will Levis, but it's like, I, I think him and Howell are similar players. I, I, we don't even know who's better at this point, right? So I, I think they would maybe, again, this is a prime trade down spot as well. All the offensive linemen that I would be comfortable taking here are taken unless I want to reach on a guard. But I get, I just think they go best player available, give Howell as many weapons as they can. I haven't seen this a lot, but you never know. I'll go with Dalton Kincaid, the tight, uh, the tight end, sorry, uh, mm. from Utah. Just, you know what? Just, just give the quarterback, whoever it is, under center, as many weapons as they can. And with the enemy now, work with Kelsey for very long. Kincaid, it's not going to be a Kelsey, I'm saying, but he moves and, and he's athletic. So I think that could be a good add to their offense. 
No, I like that too. So we go back to back tight ends, the two best ones in this draft. Um, so that brings us to Jeff and Pittsburgh, um, who tried to make some moves in the off season, but still they, they still probably have a lot of work to do here to uh, get back to being really competitive. Uh, Jeff, what do you have the Steelers doing here at 17? Man, they're the Steelers are a team that I think has like way more holes than people may even like to think, to be honest with you. I mean, the only place that I wouldn't go is wide receiver. I think that's the only spot where I feel like, yeah, they're comfortable there and tight. Obviously, they got fryer mouth. They could go tackle. <laughs> I think I'd be picking like my fourth straight tackle in a row here. Um, gosh, gosh, it really. It really is tough, but then you just see how many good players are available. And my eyes right now are on Miles Murphy, who's fallen completely out of the top 15. I think, honestly, why not add more edge rushing help? Why not make your defense like incredible like it's been in years past? That's where your strong suit's always been. Just stick to where your bread's buttered. Okay. So Miles Murphy, 17 to the Steelers. Okay, interesting. So now that brings us to Detroit, their second pick of the first round, the 18th selection. And again, could go so many different ways here. And again, in my needs, I, you know, I don't need DB anymore because I took Witherspoon at six. I could go D-line. Tight end I had there, but both of my guys are gone. I'm going to pull the trigger because the other thing I had in need here was if quarterback falls, consider it. It's not the one I thought would be falling. I thought it would maybe be Richardson, but I feel like I'm going to have to pull the trigger just in case. So I'm going to take Will Levis here at 18 uh, to the Detroit Lions. I know Jared Goff had a good year. Um, I don't think he is the answer to get them over the hump, but we've seen that in L.A. I, and I also think I don't know what, what any other teams you know, past the Lions here need a quarterback. Maybe Seattle considers it. Tampa would consider it, but I, I think that's realistic. If one of the, them falls, I don't think Detroit takes one in the top, you know, with their first pick in the first round. But if one of the ones falls here at 18, I think there's a chance they pull the trigger. So Detroit goes with Will Levis. So we have four quarterbacks going in the first round. Of course, we only had one going in the first round last year, um, but Levis 18 to Detroit. So that brings us to Tampa Bay. And uh, Bradshaw, what do the Bucks do? Obviously, life without Tom Brady. Yeah, I mean, I was going to go with Will Levis if he was there. I thought that was, I mean, Kyle, Tra Kyle Trash should not be starting for an NFL team. Or I guess Baker Mayfield's there too, but Baker Mayfield is not good. Um, so it's not, but it's not going to be quarterback. Um, making me think a little bit on this one. I was locked in and prepared. Uh, God, they could do a lot of things here. This is a little, they do still have a talented roster, but geez, they have a lot of things they could do. But a lot of a lot of their needs aren't necessarily where the board has fallen. You know what? You know what? Let's 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 do it. I don't know how he's gotten this far. I genuinely have no clue he's gotten this far. But this isn't necessarily one of their top top needs. But I feel like at this point, Tyree Wilson's got to go off the board at some point here, guys. My God, yeah, I. I didn't even notice you. I just noticed Tyree there. Wilson's got to go <laughs> off the board at some point here. So Tyree Wilson, yeah. best player available, the easily the best player available. Well, I guess Bijan again still on the board, but uh, Tyree Wilson is the best overall defensive player on the board. Uh, add him to a very talented Buccaneers roster. They could still use a bit more. They, they could still use a bit more pass rush help. Uh, so yeah, Tyree Wilson. It, it's bizarre. You know how he kind of slipped by. Uh, you know, it depends how you guys are keeping track, but when you're doing the PFF simulator, that's an easy way to track it. He's mm -hmm. like their 28th ranked player. So you, yeah. you keep you know, going past, but yeah. I do wonder on draft night how that unfolds because all of us aren't really high on Wilson, but we all kind of assume he's going in the top 10. But there was never really a spot where we got really excited to be like, sprint the card up. But you're right, Bradshaw, that seems like a move. If he falls out of the top 10, somebody's going to uh, pull the trigger there. Uh, so now Luca. The Seahawks, their second yeah. pick, they went Jalen Carter at five. So they don't really need a defensive lineman, uh, but there's not a ton of fantastic corners left. But uh, what do they do here to uh, get a little bit better and make another postseason run? Yeah, like, again, I, I don't – they need uh, – some of their needs, I think, like I mean, on Curie are offensive line. But, again, I feel like – you know that there's there's good value in the later rounds, so that they could maybe wait. But like, I'm really looking at Osiris Torrance here. Uh, I don't know if they want to 
you know, take him in the 20s. Um, but again, I, I they could double up on D linemen and just say, you know what, screw it, let's just go with another D lineman. But I, I think this would be a fun player that Pete Carroll will have a lot of fun with. I'm a huge fan of this guy, and I think he'll make plays in the secondary. I'm going to go with Brian Branch. Um, I, I just think you put him in that defense, let him fly around. I think at this point, he's not the best player available, but definitely the best safety in the draft, and I think it would be a good fit. So I'm going to go with Branch from Alabama. Yeah, Branch is you know clearly the top safety. Oh, that kind of hurts me for some of my picks down the board where I was looking at Branch. but Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, hey, that's the way the draft goes. So Seattle uh, takes should have traded up. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> uh, so Seattle was uh, selecting twenty. Miami was supposed to be selecting twenty first. Obviously, there was that whole weird thing where they were, you know, trying to get Sean Payton and Tom Brady. They don't have a first round pick, so we skip Miami, obviously, and then we jump to Jeff and the Los Angeles Chargers uh, selecting at twenty one. What do the Chargers do here, Jeff? It's 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 such an interesting thing because like their defense has so much talent. We obviously know Brandon Staley is supposed to come in there and be that guy. But I think if you're Brandon Staley and you're the Chargers, you got to think to yourself, man, we've done everything we can on defense. It's got to figure itself out at some point. We got to figure it out whatever way we can. Um, I don't think this is the way I'm thinking of it. You're not expecting uh Justin Herbert to crack his ribs again. Uh so I mean you could easily, I think you could easily pick Bijan Rob in here and at bare minimum you have another austin eckler right there and i'm so tempted to do that but there's so many other receivers on the board uh i'm not sure you want a quentin johnson uh or quentin johnston excuse me uh you could take an offensive li- li- lineman like osiris torrance there that luca just mentioned i think that wouldn't be a bad one either but then again you have a guy that could be basically his safety blanket every single down he's arguably the best receiver on some people's boards. He is. I think we're going to go with Zay flowers and just add another weapon for Justin Herbert. Make sure you can get the ball out quick to a guy like that who can make some plays after the catch. No, that's a, you know, a huge uh, weapon for Herbert. So I think that makes it a ton of sense. And then this might start the run of receivers here. Um, so I probably got to get on that. Uh, I'm selecting here for Baltimore at 22. Again, I had flowers listed there, but I'm going to go the guy I actually had bolded who I wanted a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to go the product out of Pitt and USC. Um, so let's go with Jordan Addison here to the Ravens. They, I know they got Odell Beckham Jr., but th- they need help at receiver. That's just We don't even know what Odell's going to do. He hasn't played in a full year. Um, obviously, Rashad Bateman, that was your boy, Jeff. He uh, you know banged up. He had some complaints with the team. So Baltimore, they go receiver. They take Addison off the board there. Um, So then that comes to my Vikings, Bradshaw. And what do you have the Vikings doing? I thought about receiver here, but Addison's off the board now. I I thought that would have been a better fit than Quentin Johnson, even though he is kind of similar-ish to uh, Justin Jefferson. But you have Jefferson and you have TJ Hawkinson. Dalvin Cook might be on his last legs, but still, he's still around. Uh, KJ Osborne. I like you guys adding Byron Murphy in the offseason, but I love me some Deontay Banks, and I want to talk about Deontay Banks at some point. So I'm giving you Deontay Banks because, one, you well, you guys need a corner, and I think Deontay Banks is awesome. I think he is, he's, he's a little undersized, but he is so athletic and so good. I watched a lot of his stuff at Maryland, and he he's awesome. I think Vikings fans would be very happy to get De- Deontay Banks, uh, especially I don't, I don't I don't know if they're they're expecting to be there at 23, but yeah. I would give the Vikings Deontay Banks. Uh, I don't know how you feel about that, Nolan, but I, I think you guys need corner, um, and I think he's an awesome one. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's actually a really solid corner draft, and I think, you know, if some of those other guys aren't in this class, he he's up there as maybe number one, but uh, I think regardless, they go receiver or corner, um, and they've been able to hit on receiver in the past. They haven't been able to hit on corner in the past. They've been really bad at that, actually, so hopefully Banks is the one that uh, sticks out. And uh, actually, you know, gets them to where they want to be. So another corner off the board there. So that's four corners. We've had, you know, two receivers gone just in the last three picks. The Jags, what a postseason run it was for them last year, Luca. What do the Jags do uh, to uh, maybe get another AFC South crown? Yeah, I was I was going to take Deontay Banks. Uh, yeah, I thought it would have been a <laughs> huge fit uh, for the Jags, but – Again, if you're Jacksonville, I think you like the way your roster is kind of built. Um, I'm going to go best player available here. I'm just going to go Kalijah Kansi. Just plug him in the middle of your defensive line. 
and just let him go. And if Bryce Young or CJ Stroud or Anthony Richardson, whoever it is, is in your division, you're going to want to stop them, create pressure through the middle. And I think Clancy can do that. So I got the Jags taking him. He was falling, and I, I was uh, again one of my later teams. I was hoping to, you know, scoop him up there, but mm. not gonna be able to do that now. Can't he? Uh, like undersized, but he's athletic freak. Um, so I, I know it's hard to compare him to Aaron Donald because he's you know a pit uniform and an undersized D tackle, but uh, <laughs> he's got a lot of similar traits, which is uh, pretty wild. Uh, Jeff, New York Giants picking at twenty five. Uh, could go a lot of different directions here. It seems like their quarterback position is locked up. And the running back position might be locked up too, but uh, again, they could go defense or they could get another weapon to help Daniel Jones. What do you have the Giants doing here at 25? You know, you would think with the level of quarterback play, you they, you would think, hey, they might be in play for Hedden and Hooker here. Why not, right? But uh, I don't think they're going to do that, unfortunately. I think they're going to take a wide receiver. And I feel like the guy that they're going to like is a guy that I like quite a bit, which is Cedric Tillman from Tennessee. So he's actually going to be the first Tennessee uh, wide receiver that comes off the board, not Jalen Hyatt, despite his upside. I think Cedric Tillman just looks like an all-round good player, solid player that's uh, tough, to be honest, tough to, tough not to like, big body guy who could just kind of do a little bit of, bit of everything, right? And you add him and... Uh, you know, Darren Waller there and Daniel Jones actually has some targets to work with for the next uh, three years of his overloaded, definitely overpaid for a contract. Well, how about that? So new, one of your first picks is one you go a little bit off the board and then uh, one of your last picks, you go a little bit off the board, but Tillman, you had <laughs> draft that you really, really like. Um, I, and also I, 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 I think they're going to go weapon regardless. I don't think they would have gone Quentin Johnston. I just, even though he's a little bit different than um, uh, Kenny Galladay, I, I just don't think they want a kind of a guy who can be a jump ball receiver. I, I think they want a guy who's uh, in and out of breaks really quick and flashy and a fantastic red runner. So uh, regardless, they're going to go uh, receiver, but uh, we'll stay in division here at 26 Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I, I don't, I, I hate that I'm looking at this, PFF mock draft simulator and it says number one need is running back. And no, Tony team. Pollard's a god. I know, and I, I don't think they should do it either. Just because Pollard, I'd rather see him get a lot of touches. And I think they gave somebody else uh, who isn't good at all um, <laughs> you know, a one year contract too. But I have the best remaining tight end, but I'm not going to really go there. Oh, Ro- I did forgot they signed Ronald Jones. Wow, Rojo, yeah. baby. I did not Rojo. remember that. Ah. Uh, you know why that it's not sexy at all. And, and I really feel gross even doing it, but um, just bolster that uh, defensive line, get somebody on the opposite of Micah Parsons. Um, I'm going to go with Lucas Van Ness from Iowa. Uh, I, again, we had talked that he was going to go, you know, top 10. Now they were getting close to the end of the first round. I think they uh, look at the upside and see where they're selecting him. So uh, Lucas Van Ness out of Iowa goes 26 to the Cowboys, not sexy in the slightest. And uh I wanted some fireworks, but uh, maybe I'm too afraid to do that. Um, so that leaves – what do we have here? We have the Bills in Bradshaw 27, who could go. I talked you out of it. I did it. I talked you out of it. God damn it. B. John Robinson will not last this long with B. John Robinson's goal. I don't even think they would do it if he was on the board. I genuinely don't think they would do it, but I'm going to do it. They gave Damian Harris money. Dumb. James Cook is pretty good, but <laughs> B. John Robinson helps them in the run game and in the pass game. Uh, I don't think, I, again, I, I think if the ball, board fell this way, I genuinely don't think they would do it anyway, but this would be so much fun. Bijan, J, uh, J, J, Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, Khalil Shakir. I don't know why that was the second, the, the fourth name I went to. Gabe Davis, Bijan to the Bills would be so much fun. Let's do that. Wow. He did talk me out of it. And, and, and I kind of figured like if he got to this range, you could, you know, if someone was going to, you got to talk. If you're, so if you're pretty much any of these teams, you talk yourself into it. But the bills, big, big time moves. So look at the Bengals. Um, they, they added someone off in uh, the off season. Obviously they bolstered that offensive line, which I've been trying to do for years. They lose a ton on the back end, lose both their safeties. They lose their tight end. What do the Bengals do here at 28? I think they're in a pretty good spot because they, they address the offensive line. They have a good roster. I, I don't feel comfortable. I think taking definitely not a safety. Corners, they seem to be flying off our board. 
I'm going to go with a guy who's probably another offensive lineman, and if you can get this guy at the peak of his powers to do something really good for Burrow, why not? Let's go with Darnell Washington and just see what he can do with Burrow, Chase, Higgins. That's really exciting, and he can run block. I don't know if Mix is going to be there next year, but we're going to go with Darnell Washington and just take the upside. Okay. No, I, I think that's solid. So he's the third tight end who squeezes it into the draft. So that's the Bengals there at 28. The Saints now at 29. Uh, this was a trade with the 49ers. Um, so what do the Saints do here, Jeff, to uh, get a little bit better? Obviously, they added Derek Carr, uh, but still some holes on this roster that uh, somehow continues to get away with this salary crap stuff. But whatever. <laughs> Sorry for another day. You sound, you sound a little tired of it, Nolan. You sound a little tired of it. I, 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 I am too. I can't stand this team. Just... <laughs> I, th- I think a lot of us are. I think a lot of us like do have yeah. a lot of a big vendetta against the Saints. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Like adding Jarvis Landry makes me think they won't go weapon. I don't really think there is a weapon worthy on this board either. Honestly, to just stack up for Derek Carr, I do think the offensive line is looking a little bit like Swiss cheese more nowadays than in the Drew Breed days. So let's go with a uh, Florida offensive guard, Osiris Torrance. Make it simple. Make it quick. Make it easy and painless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nothing sexy, but that's the way it goes. Uh, so that goes to the Eagles, their second pick. Um, and again, I'm going to go so many different ways here. Uh, I again, like if Bijan was there, I would have went up and got him, but I, I and there's no weapons that I really, really like here. Um, geez, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go this uh, on the interior defensive line, kind of a Sneaky pick. A uh, kid from Michigan, Mazzy Smith. Um, he was kind of that borderline first-round, second-round guy. But I, I, we'll, we'll go him here at 30. Nothing sexy, but they uh, you know, they lost Javon Hargrave in free agency. So bring him in, add some more depth there. Bradshaw, what do you have the Chiefs, the Super Bowl Chiefs doing here at 31? Probably a good spot you know, they'd trade out, but who knows? Yeah. Could trade out. I there, there are two guys I'm looking at, and I'm just deciding which one. I think would they would uh, sprint up more towards because I, I think they I think they would like both both of these guys. You know what? They don't have this type of player in their wide receiver room, uh, and I think just to give them a little bit of a different look, I'm going to give them Quentin Johnson. I'm not a huge fan, but I think just giving them a different body in that wide receiver room, Quentin Johnson. The other guy I was concerned with Will McDonald. I think they'd like Will McDonald a little bit too, just to add pass rushers. But they don't have this type of guy. Give him a big body, kind of speedy guy. Uh, Quentin Johnson to the Chiefs. All right, with the first round complete, all of us, except Luca, had an extra pick. So, Luca, we're going to give you the uh, give you the floor here. Yeah. There's, there's, obviously, there was lots of pl- uh, players who didn't get selected in the first round who we all thought were going to be selected in the first round. Quentin Johnson's a name that sticks out. But the Steelers, they own the top pick in the second round after that horrific trade with the Bears, no offense, Jeff, where they give away a second rounder, which ended up being the tops pick in the second round, which essentially ends up being a first round pick because Miami lost one. So it's the 32nd pick of the draft that was in that uh, Chase Claypool trade. But mm-hmm. with all the players on the board, what do you think the Steelers would do here? Would they just go best player available or is there something specific to their roster? Or who do you just think is shockingly somehow still on the board that you think would be a name called early? Yeah, I just think they go a position of need here. I'll just go Anton Harrison, right? Just just, just help out the offensive line. I think uh, Miles Murphy, yes, Jeff took Miles Murphy for them. So they're beefing up up front on both sides of the ball. And I think Anton Harrison, it's a deep tackle draft, you could say. And, and he's kind of the odd man out that no one talks about. But if the Steelers are here at 32, I think they're more than, than happy with taking him here. Um, technically, like you said, a first round pick first round type of player. So um, yeah, Anton Harrison to beef up that offensive line that feels like they've been trying to upgrade for years now. Yeah, no, no, I I think that makes a ton of sense. Not super sexy, but smart on their part. Second round would have lots of receivers available that we all talked about in prior episodes, but Hey, we're not doing a second round mock, but so we'll see what happens uh, this pat this upcoming weekend uh, with the NFL draft. Thanks for listening, guys. That's Bradshaw. That's Jeff. That's Luca. I'm Nolan. One of the more fun episodes we always enjoy doing. Hopefully you enjoy as well. Take care.
Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please drop a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to Lingo Sports and Lingo News for a whole lot more just like this.